And we have actually a fairly good collection of letters that we wrote under the banner of Opinions Incorporated. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Pork Chops, Rice, and Peaches. I'm Noah. I'm Richard. And we are doing another spitball episode after we recorded our bullet train episode. As you can tell by all the Thomas stuff that's still present on set. <laughs> so we got an interesting little off the, to off the top of the head topic. That was Yeah, this came from a phone too. call last week when we were discussing doing bullet train and trying to schedule it and make everything happen. Yeah. And... Uh, Take it away. Oh, I just have noticed a topic of many articles on online, and it's just becoming... I, I try to avoid drama. Uh, my social medias are fine-tuned to, like, three things, and it's video games, video game news, like anime, maybe, okay, martial arts... Yeah. And pit bull puppies. Okay. I, like, that's, that's what my social... But occasionally, you know, things creep through, and I'm seeing a lot of things about, you know, the new... And I'm not... I'm going to keep this as politics-free as possible. We try to. We try to as much as possible, beaches, right? but, you know, you have to discuss the topic without getting into it. Um, I cross that line more than you do. You do. Yeah. Um, But, you know, we got the new... Little Mermaid movie coming out, and people are reacting to the Little Mermaid being black now. You've got um, Star Wars fans complaining about like half the things that come out, and then praising half the decisions made. You've got all these different franchises. We're in the height of franchise hype, and there is so much fan backlash that people are starting to label it as the toxic fandoms the toxic marvel fans who are complaining about she hulk and then you've got the toxic star wars fans complaining about whatever the topic of the week is you know you've got the uh, video game fans are are being too gatekeepy of their of their games and it's it, the question becomes when can a fan base ruin a franchise and when is the fan base correct because we obviously to have these franchises and to have these properties be successful so that we can consume and enjoy the content you have to have a, a give and take at the most base form you have a creator who says i want to make a story i want to tell a story and you can look at it in two different ways. You can look at it optimistically or cynically. Optimistically, they want to entertain as many people as possible and share their vision. All right? Cynically, they want to make a boatload of money. All right? Either way, they should focus on telling a good story that's entertaining, that brings in a lot of money, because either way, you need more money to keep making these products and keep telling your story. Is that what you just wrote down? Well, I'm, 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 well, I'm, I'm listening to, to, to you, and, it, and since we really haven't talked about this in depth, um, uh, I, I'm running through my mind of, of different things. Um, back 30 or 40 years ago, mm -hmm. my friend Dave and I would sit and we would talk about movies, mm -hmm. and we would say, I wish the, I wish I could tell the director x y or z yeah and occasionally we'd sit down and and uh we would write letters mm -hmm. and, and we have actually a fairly good collection of letters that we wrote under the banner of opinions incorporated um, <laughs> <laughs> and and <laughs> and and I, I still have them and and mm -hmm. you know and, and it's interesting that the types of responses that you would get uh we wrote the finish uh, the blah, 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 football commissioner i believe back then at who was it? It was the guy who had been commissioner for 30 years. Now I can't even remember his name. Mm. Um, anyways, we wrote him about geographical realignment of the NFL. Because at the time, the alignment of the NFL made absolutely no sense. Such as, back then, the uh, the NFC North okay, mm -hmm. uh, was the Chicago Bears, the Green Bay Packers, the Detroit Lions, the Minnesota Vikings... Geographically, that's pretty tight. Yeah. 
and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. <laughs> <laughs> and then you had the New York Giants, the Philadelphia Eagles. Mm-hmm. Uh, who else was in their division? Someone up north. And the Dallas Cowboys. Okay. I mean, it's just <laughs> okay. stuff like that just didn't make sense. And so we suggested a geographical realignment of the NFL. And we got this long letter back from the NFL. I am sure they had heard this yeah. argument over and over. They had all the prepared paragraphs. But their their main point was it's just not feasible. Hmm. Two years later, they realigned the NFL geographically. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so. <laughs> <laughs> they fans are right <laughs> well you know and 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 but they they knew it mm-hmm. okay and you know but there's also there are there's there's a lot to consider when when they talked about this realignment and, and this is actually going to relate to yeah to the movies um one of the things that they talked about was the fact that there are rivalries that are set up that you yeah. don't want to break up the rivalries because they're lucrative yeah and let's face it the Dallas Cowboys versus the Philadelphia Eagles. The Dallas Cowboys versus the New York Giants. Those are huge established rivalries. You don't want to break them up. Yeah. Okay. Um, there was a fantastic rivalry between Brett Favre and the Green Bay Packers mm-hmm. and Warren Sapp and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Hmm. And when Favre and Sapp were on the field together, it was entertaining football. Okay. Because I think they, I, I'm fairly certain they had a tremendous amount of mutual respect but boy, they went at it, and they went at it hard, and they were fun to watch. Um, ultimately, uh, the rearrangement of the NFL and taking Tampa out of that division, well, they just created a new rivalry because the New Orleans Saints versus uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers has become a new good it, rivalry. It is, yeah. I think the Saints might have been in the West at the time, and so you had San Francisco and a bunch of West Coast teams, and then the saints but if you think about traveling and you think about all of the 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 whole traveling salesman issue what's the cheapest way of doing it Mm -hmm. crossing the country all the time is not the best you know ways the nfl had a lot to consider okay so but we had to do it through pen and paper with a stamp what you now call snail mail and then Mm -hmm. we had to wait weeks to see if they would even bother to respond to you you know so we wrote to timothy zahn about a couple of star wars things and we wrote to you know different things and, and we got answers the internet has made it so much easier to do it yeah instead of sitting and of course dave and i being that we were both aspiring english teachers at the time wanted to make sure that everything was grammatically perfectly yeah perfect um (laughs) grammatically perfectly (laughs) (laughs) grammatically perfect and you know spelling grammar punctuation the whole thing and so we worked really hard at these letters to make sure that they were perfect when when they went out yeah now if you take a look the internet has allowed instant communication Mm -hmm. and then People aren't being thoughtful about what they're putting out. Nope. Um, then you you just get this whole snowball effect. And then you see even on, and this is really disappointing for me, major news organizations mm-hmm. with massive errors in the writing online. Yep. Either nothing's being edited. And I think that people just aren't putting a lot of thought into all of the hissing and moaning that they're doing yeah well you can also freelance right on the internet and get paid for an opinion piece that they're they might post once on twitter and then never post again right you know that it's the internet has allowed that and that i think that comes with there's a i mean there's obviously very very obvious negatives you know, you get a lot of people where it's it looks and sounds and oftentimes is a lot of whining and moaning and complaining. Mm-hmm. But there's also a lot of I wouldn't say I wouldn't necessarily say a lot of, but there's there's some good examples of it being effective. So okay. before we get into like a long list of how this is like can be detrimental, there's a couple good instances. Um, electronic arts. All right, they're even on my monster can right there. Electronic Arts, uh, EA, is a video game company. Right. Big one, one of the biggest. And they own a ton of different franchises and IPs. And when Disney bought Star Wars, they went to EA and gave them exclusivity rights to make Star Wars video games for like five years or something like that. 
and they wanted to reboot the Star Wars Battlefront franchise, okay. which were two of the greatest games to come out of the early 2000s and early LucasArts. So they rebooted the franchise, started from scratch. They didn't make us Battlefront 3 like we wanted. They restarted it. They were like, no, this is our franchise now, so we're making our version of it. So they made Star Wars Battlefront 1, and it was all right. There was a lot of complaints. But people, for the most part, played it. They were like, it's a little lackluster on content. Whatever. Then, Battlefront 2 comes out. And EA stock dropped overnight. I don't remember what the actual detail was, but it, it, very reminiscent of the GameStop situation that we had last year. Yeah, EA stock plummeted overnight. Because it was revealed that they made the game completely pay to win. You were paying $60 for a brand new game. And if you wanted to unlock anything in there, you either had to grind for like 80 hours to get one character to get a chance at it. Or you'd have to pay an insane amount of money. And I don't remember what the actual details were. So they built in a cash grab. Yeah. They they built in the, the very still to this day controversial loot box system. And that's where loot box systems went down. But that's a whole different topic. Okay. Anyway, people realized this when they were playing the early beta or when it was starting to come out and they could see what was happening, the early release of the game. Um, they could see this system. They, could, they figured it out. And it sold horribly at launch and their stock plummeted overnight disney pulled back the exclusivity deal even though they already had other games in the works and mm. the ea finally looked at the other person on my monster can respawn who make apex legends okay. and they pull i think they pulled out of respawn's development and let respawn continue to work on jedi fallen order which was a fantastic game so and then uh, over time, EA took down all the, the systems in place in Battlefront 2, replaced them, made them more fair, made them balanced, made them what they should have been in the first place, and got a little bit more return on it as people were like, oh, the game's better now? The game's actually fair now? I might consider getting it, especially gotcha. if it's a free-to-play Sure, if I get it on a deal. Imagine. And that killed the entire loot box craze for a, for a while we now have battle passes in video games which is again a different topic but i mean we have a much better system than loot boxes which is essentially gambling you were gambling you get a box you'd press open in game and it would pop out rewards and it was gambling gotcha and a lot of countries were starting to crack down on it especially after ea had this massive controversy. Gotcha. So the fans online going, don't buy this game, don't support this, don't support their money-grubbing antics, kind of changed an entire industry, one could argue, for the better. That's capitalism. Yes. That is nothing other than capitalism. Yep. With a... That is free market. With, with, a, with a big way, uh, uh, an easy way of getting the word out. Yes. That's all it is. Yep. And the other big ish, the big thing about fans going on, and this one was actually fans like complaining about something and basically boycotting something, was the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. Uh, they didn't they do a a, a complete redo because yeah. of the, the yeah. fan reaction. The original Sonic the Hedgehog trailer had this horrifyingly ugly Sonic model, <laughs> and they played it. It's Sonic the Hedgehog. He's a blue hedgehog who runs fast and collects rings. I know. Okay. I remember right. watching you for play kids. as a kid. Yeah, for right? kids yeah. stuff. Okay. Who had the bright idea of releasing the first trailer for his first big live action blockbuster movie to Gangster's Paradise? <laughs> yeah, that was the sound. That was the soundtrack. To the first Sonic the Hedgehog trailer was this horrifying Sonic <laughs> doing <Sorry>. Sonic things. <laughs> and I'm laughing for two reasons. One, 
I mean, don't get me wrong. I like the song. I actually unironically like the song. In in my mind, I had to separate Gangster Paradise from, from Amish, Amish Paradise. Paradise. Because I'm actually more familiar with Weird Al's parody than I am with the original song. I have seen the video for the original song yeah. a couple times. I, but <laughs> yeah, that would be a bad combination. Yeah, it I was just really snort on. Yeah, yeah you did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you see how completely out of touch that was. Sure. And the people who grew up playing Sonic in the in the 90s on the Sega Genesis, the mm-hmm. 2D, 8, 16-bit sprite, 32, whatever, and then playing it through the early 2000s, everyone who, like, was a Sonic fan who wanted to see this movie went, oh, hell no. I am not watching that. If you release that, I am not watching it. And then thousands of people took to the internet, VFX artists, amateurs, and made it look better with, like just basic editing software that you can get on your computer, they made it look better. So then, essentially, the internet bullied the studio into going back, delaying the movie, taking six months to redo all of Sonic's scenes with a brand new model and, like, editing it and changing it to make it look better. And then what happened when it released? Everyone who went online and said, I'm not watching this unless you change it, went and saw it. Like, that was one of the very few times where I have ever seen the internet go collectively, that's bad, and complain, right. but then uphold their word and go watch it. Go because watch the it. movie made a ton of money, probably more money than it would have made if they had just done it from the get-go. Right. People were like, oh my gosh, this company actually stopped, took the time, went back, changed it, fixed it, made it better. Awesome. We'll go watch it now. We'll support it. Thank you for actually listening to us. So between the EA and the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, we've got two great examples of what of something good coming out of fan reactions and okay. fan. But uh, at the same time, we've been seeing the issues recently with Riva in Obi Wan. You know, we've you know. We're, we're seeing this new backlash with with Ariel, and despite what your anyone's opinions are, it's whatever. You have told me. Uh, many times, if you if, like before the internet, back when you didn't want to support something, you just didn't go see it. You didn't watch it. Right. That's capitalism. Nowadays, That's free market. Nowadays, I think more people just go online and complain about stuff, and then watch it so that they can complain about it more. I think that. Um, but I, I don't know. I think that a lot of people try to destroy it. I, I think yes. that I think that there's uh, I think that society a portion of society has become a little bit vindictive, mm-hmm. and their idea isn't um, uh, their their idea isn't uh, I just disagree respectfully and go on about my life, but it's I must destroy this at all costs, mm-hmm. and um, I think it makes people who normally feel powerless feel powerful. Yeah, uh, I think that's part of. Uh, I think that's part of the, 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 the attraction of people using the internet and doing the very things that you're, you're, you're talking about when they're doing it in the, in the negative way. Um, uh, in, in that is that it gives voice to people who otherwise feel voiceless. Um, but, you know, what did Shakespeare write? It's all sound and fury signifying nothing. Um, <laughs> you know. You know um, <laughs> That's a mic drop. <laughs> um, the, 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 uh, I, I've, I haven't paid much attention I, to this whole uh, casting of Ariel because primarily I have absolutely no interest in live action remakes of animated movies that don't need to be remade. Yep. The stories are timeless. They're fantastic. They're well made. Now, this does get into, and we've talked about remakes. Mm-hmm. When when is a remake good? When yep. it, when is it not? When is a remake better? Yep. That's our whole Thomas Crown affair discussion. Oh yeah. Right. And so, are these movies being remade, and are they improving upon the original? I. And and so 
if I'm going to judge that, I'm going to judge it based on are they telling a story with a beginning, a middle, and an end? Are mm-hmm. they going to have interesting characters? Are the characters going to have character development? Yep. Um, uh, do we have a clear protagonist and an antagonist? Are there going to be surprises? Is there going to be entertainment along the way? Yep. Is there going to be something new that made it worth retelling this story? Or are we just retelling it because A, we can. And B, we got nothing else in the pipeline, so let's make this. Yep. Honestly, just to touch on that real quick, when it comes to the Disney live action remakes, I think it's I think they're naturally worse by nature. Just inherently, it doesn't matter whether you have the best actress or actor or actress in the world. It doesn't matter whether you have, you know, a great budget. It doesn't matter uh, whether you're retelling the story. Because all of them, these are animated stories. Everything was animated. And they're trying to make live action versions of them. All right? You're taking something animated, and the only way to make it in live action is probably with heavy uses of CGI or really expensive special effects props. All right? You're not going to get Pinocchio unless you put a, a real person a real boy in an outfit or in prosthetics that look like right. he's a doll or you use an actual doll animatronic. So inherently these things are going to age worse. Well, it, so just the just the just the touch on that that CGI will be outdated in 10 years. Well, yeah, we look back at movies made in the uh, 80s and we look at their special effects and they're just cringeworthy compared to what we have now. Yeah. And and if they're if they're CGI, yeah, yeah. Well, unless it's unless you're Terminator Two, then I think you actually did a better job than most do nowadays. The uh, <laughs> it, part of part of the 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 value of looking at an old movie, and and I, I think the one that uh, comes to mind right now is Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, uh, partly because I was debating drinking out of my brand new grumpy oh, mug. grumpy mug, <laughs> and. Um, I uh, half of the value of the movie is the quality of the artwork and the mm-hmm. understanding that these artists were sitting and drawing everything twenty five and thirty pictures per frame, you mm-hmm. know, or per second. Or I mean, the the animation was so smooth because they were using so many, many. pictures and it yep. was hand drawn, and and just the artistry of putting those together. Yep. is amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, Fantasia is not a particularly entertaining movie. No. But the artwork in Fantasia and the is music incredible. Is, yep. And there's there's an example where fa- the sequel was better than the original. Yeah. Because Fantasia 2 was just amazing. Yeah. Um, uh, especially Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue. That was just fantastic. A, a, yeah, yeah, it was just fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Um, but as we meander away there um, yeah we shouldn't you know touch those things uh th- we have this this component going on in in society right now in this this time history is going to judge whether this is a good thing or not a good thing yeah but we we have this push of uh, to be a pessimistic box checking we have to have the black character. We have to have the Asian character. We have to have the gay character. We have to have the... And, and it's like like somehow a movie isn't good unless we have in the movie represented every single segment of society you can possibly represent. Yeah. Okay. And, and I have absolutely... Or a movie is automatically good because you... Well, yeah, Good, uh, all right. Uh, representation so, and it's untouchable. Tom Hanks made a movie about uh, a gay lawyer who died of AIDS. It was a fantastical performance, mm-hmm. and it, it was a touching story. And, um, you know, if you, I, I, I grew up. I, you know, I, I remember watching the whole Ryan White story, and I don't know if you're familiar with that. And the friendship developed between Ryan White and Elton John, mm-hmm. and and. Um, Rand White contracted AIDS through a blood transfusion because he's a hemophiliac. He was a hemophiliac, mm. and and he contracted AIDS, and then he he experienced all kinds of 
you know, pushback from his community because everyone was afraid of AIDS because mm -hmm. nobody understood yeah. it except for very few, you know, really smart doctors. And as we were learning about it, and then and Elton John, you know, befriended him, and um, so so you know this story that he that that Hanks you know told in this movie, and I I think it was a real story. I, mm -hmm. I think it was based on real life. Um, incredible performance, and it humanized. AIDS patients. Mm -hmm. That's really important to yeah, do. It's That's very, really important very to do. Important to do. But nowadays, mm -hmm. it's oh no no that movie's bad and should be removed from society because you used a straight actor playing a gay role. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you put a gay actor in that role? It was like I grew up in a time where, and I was taught this. And honestly, okay, so you know the town I went to high school in. Yeah, one of the most bigoted towns in northern illinois yep. i grew up with racists that were just it was horrifying yeah and but one of the things that i was taught in school by a very gifted theater teacher who was did not buy into any of that racism it doesn't matter the color of your skin if you're a talented actor you can play the role yeah all right Mm -hmm. I, I, he brought in a friend from the Chicago theater scene, uh, an African American gentleman. Uh, uh, he uh, he gave us a performance, and uh, he played straight people, gay people, women, men. It was amazing to watch this man. His acting skills, he was a chameleon. He could just slip into any role. It was truly impressive. I wish I could remember his name. I think I think I was a senior in high school when this happened. This would have been 83. Um, but, but he left a mark on me. Mm -hmm. And that mark is that anybody can play any role. Yeah. So when Harry Potter and the Cursed Child went on Broadway, and I learned that they casted a... a, a the black English girl as Hermione Granger. Yeah. I was kind of amused. I was like, cool. You know, yeah. amused not in the in in any negative way. I was just like, you know, hey, pretty progressive. Let it go. Yeah. Obviously she's got the acting chops to pull it off on stage. Great. Yeah. Right? You're not gonna make yeah. it on the British stage if you don't have the skill. Yeah. Um I don't care that that there's a black aerial. I, I really don't care yeah. at all. I, I'm more annoyed that it's another live action remake of of, of a cartoon, a, of a right? cartoon. That didn't yeah. need to be remade, right? Yeah. But um, the the uh, I can't imagine what it's like to be an actor and face the backlash that because of the color of your skin that 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 um, oh, God, what was what was the actress who who played Riva? Um, Moses Ingram. Moses Ingram. Thank mm -hmm. you. I, I can't imagine what it's like to face that. Yeah. And in a free society with freedom of speech, we know that there are going to be ignorant people who say ignorant things. And th we have to work past them. We have to discourage it, but we have to work past them. It's, yeah. It, you know, um, Obi Wan was going to get criticized either way for the writing up through Episode Four. You know, you, <laughs> you know, know what? <laughs> yeah, my, my my friend Dave and in, in he, I think he put it in the comments when we talked about Obi Wan. Mm -hmm. He made the observation about Moses Ingraham's performance as Reva, and he said she she yelled her lines mm -hmm. a lot, like her go to expression was yelling. Yeah, and I thought about it, and I thought mm, he, he kind of has a point there. Yeah, she didn't really soften it until kind of the end. Yeah, um, that is a criticism of a performance, not a criticism, criticism of, of a the actor or uh, actress of the actor or actress mm -hmm. of the person. And so, um, is it fair to say that? Yes. Yes. Said it online. Yep. Not doing any damage. Not that we have a big enough fan base right now that we no. could do damage. No. But you know, thank you for lasting this long. <laughs> um, <laughs> But but I think that the, the point that, that, that we were getting to, or you were hinting at, was a comment I made on the phone. Um, I've talked about how much I like Luke Cage. Yeah. Of all the Netflix Marvel shows, I think I like Luke Cage the most. 
I was three or four episodes into uh, Luke Cage season one before I realized the entire cast was black. Yeah. That there was a token white guy, and he turned out to be the bad guy, <laughs> or one of the bad guys. Yeah. And, and, and I was like, when the storytelling and the acting and the performing is in the writing, the yeah. writing is so riveting, it is so well done, it, that... You don't even notice the color of the skin. Mm-hmm. Of that's what we're striving for. But that was done. I, I don't. I, th- that never came across as box checking. No, I, I didn't know the sexual preferences of the characters except for the couple that were sleeping together. Yeah, I didn't know who was what, and I didn't need to know. It wasn't germane to the story. Yep, and and the, I think that's the thing. That's the thing that makes this box checking so annoying. Mm-hmm. If it's not germane to the story, why do we need to know the sexual preference of a character? Yep. It was not germane to Harry Potter to know that Albus Dumbledore was gay. Mm-hmm. Now, if Rowling had saved that... Mm-hmm. And if Rowling had let that drop in this new series, the Fantastic Beasts, it would have added a whole new level to the duel with Grindelwald, and everyone would have gone, "Oh, that makes sense." Yeah, this makes it would have so been so much sense. It would have been a great reveal, as yep. opposed to having it come out a year or two online after, after Book Latin, Seven came right, out. You know. You know. Um, yeah. But society is pushing filmmakers to tick the boxes. Mm. And then you've got the other people who are reacting negatively to it, almost overboard. Right. When they could just ignore it and just not support it. There's so many different ways to handle so this. There is a writer, uh, podcaster, guy named Matt Walsh. I don't follow Matt Walsh. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know much about what he writes. Um, he's conservative. Mm. I suspect he's far right. Mm-hmm. I really don't know. But his response to this whole thing about having a, a black aerial was that if uh, creatures that live in the deep, deep depths of the ocean are actually translucent, and so she, Ariel shouldn't be that dark skin because uh, she should actually be translucent. And then he went <laughs> on a whole rant about protecting translucent rights. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> oh my god! I just thought, okay, I get the satirical point you're making. You're not really helping the situation no, any. You're really not. I, Oh it my is, gosh. It is just from a purely objective standpoint, hysterically funny. Because <laughs> you hadn't come across that one, huh? Nope. Yeah. Nope. Well, all, all everything I'm seeing is like an article about an article about two tweets. You know, half the time you get these things, it's like there's two tweets on on Twitter. That someone said, oh, I don't like this. And then someone found those and then wrote an article about it. And then people write articles about the articles. And then people comment on those articles. And they start arguing with each other on Facebook. Because yes. fans are never satisfied. Well, and and we we, we almost have not... Uh, we have too much accessibility yeah. to, to, to voice, you know. But to a certain extent. Like, I see... To some credit, I see in Star Wars all the time. I am convinced that diehard Star Wars fans don't care about storytelling. They don't care about the uh, the character arcs. They don't care about a good development because I see so many things that are pictures like like artwork of Obi Wan on the Death Star. You know, after he did the right. rocks invader, this right. was a big one I saw was him doing the same thing, but with a bunch of stormtroopers blasters and they're all firing at once, and all the reactions are, "Would it have been so cool if he had done this?" And it's like, I swear, all they want is to see 
things they think are cool, not an actual story. Well, I, yeah. That was cool because, like, and, and they completely missing the point of how, what made the scene with The Rock so cool. I know. You know? I know. You're completely missing the point. The point is, he was traumatized, and he's recovered, and he's now back to his confidence, and with this surge of confidence comes a surge of power, and he's going to beat the crap out of Vader now. And the smile. And, and we the talked smile, about this. which if we people, talked about. So, so go to, it would be that side of the screen, that right up and there. go down, the, the, and, and the find the card. Obi-Wan conversation, because... Because because he had that 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 grin on his face, it was it was the Obi Wan that we saw in the Clone Wars. Yeah, it was, which was really a nice, really you know, nice time. The confidence and that smile, and it's like, oh, you ain't seen nothing yet, dude. And then of course you tied it into, and I hadn't made this con- this connection. You tied it into the look that Alec Guinness gives. Right as he's about to be struck mm-hmm. down, is like, oh, you're not gonna win. I'm gonna school you one last, last time. time. Oh, you are going to hate this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you know, there's but there's meaning behind that, and people are reacting to. They just want to see the flashy, cool stuff. Right. They're like, I just want to see my character be cool. It's like, okay, go read fan fiction. Well, okay, okay. Go, go watch. Right. Go watch the YouTube video that where they reimagine the duel between Obi Wan and Vader in the hallway, which is really good yes it's really good yes. but that like that's where you get that that's where you get that so so the people who refilmed that mm-hmm. okay kudos to them it was fun it was fun it took a tremendous amount of work yep and they you know it was entertaining to watch and fine move on i wish i yep. had that much free time in my life to do something like that but um mm-hmm. you know uh but i i think that was different than the, the people who are Crabbing. I, yeah. I will tell you this. The, the people talking about that move with lasers, it would be kind of cool. It would be kind of cool. <laughs> it would be cool. It would but be cool. A, but but it, it doesn't carry the meaning. No, it doesn't. Right. It, so, um, so, so what do you think? I mean, is it, I, I, it... Are fans doing more damage or are they... I, I think you've got... I think you've got the main issue right now because obviously we have seen how this accessibility and this ability to to give feedback is um has been helpful but then at the same time you, have you heard that Thor Love and Thunder has earned less money than Dark World No the movie we love and everyone hates and was like the worst performing out of the first three. Right, is now no is longer. Is now no longer <laughs> because Love and Thunder has gr- as like I guess has earned worse than than Dark World, or it has lower ratings. One of the two. I I don't know. I actually I think it was lower ratings. Lower ratings. I think it's lower ratings. I think it made more and it has lower ratings. Gotcha. People are still going to speak, and I think Taika Waititi was dropped from Thor Five. I think they're no longer going to have him do any more Thor movies. You should be happy about that. You know what? But uh, I, 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 I think the, the whole Marvel universe is going the wrong direction right now. I think uh, as I've as I've watched more of of uh, She Hulk, it, it's just it, it, I was thinking about it the other day. They've just completely gone off the rails. Yeah. I I don't know what they're trying to accomplish, and I don't like what they're doing with Wong. Yeah. Um, the, you know, and so um, I, I don't know I what they're it's doing. The wrong thing to do. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I think, I think Picking on the low one hand, fruit. yeah, you were. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've got a subsection of fans who are seeing the direction that things are going. And they're responding to it in the wrong dir- in the wrong way, and it's stirring up more controversy because it's the whole you can't fight fire with fire, you know. If you come out guns blazing, attacking something, people are going to people who liked it are going to come out and defend it, guns blazing. And now you've just got a firefight on your hands, and it you're just no one's going to win in that situation. Yeah, no it, one's going to win. I no one's going to win in that situation. The best way to deal with this is 
through capitalism. The best way to deal with this is support the movies that you like that are well made that yeah. you enjoy and stay away from the ones that, that you, you don't, don't and then leave it at that. And and that that's what I do. And I also I you made mention of what's in your uh, your uh, your feed. Mm-hmm. Your, you know, Facebook, Instagram, whatever your yeah. you know uh, social media of choices. Your mother will tell you I have the most boring Facebook <laughs> feed known to mankind because I filter out all of the noise yeah. and all of the That's people what I to do. screaming about these movies. I, I That's what I try noise, to do. Right? I try to hide it all. I want I want pictures of pit bulls and little puppies, and right. I don't want cute kitten photos and nah, no? nah. yeah. Screw the cats. No, your Uncle John <laughs> posts really fun. Yeah, I know uh, that. Cat photos. Um, but, I, yeah. But, and, and then I, like, I've got too much going on in life to mess with that. This is the other thing that just absolutely baffles me about modern society. Do people have time to talk about this stuff? You and I, you and I. Sits in irony. <laughs> 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 well, I was gonna. <laughs> I I get your point. I you get your I, point. You carve out time you're right we schedule this every couple of weeks Mm -hmm. we frequently film back-to-back episodes yep we 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 have to schedule the time we are not clockwork systematically doing this all of the time this is this is a recreational hobby that we enjoy yep and and it's a hobby Mm -hmm. right we don't live on the internet we don't post this stuff every day we're not trying to make a living as content providers and i think people trying to make a living as content providers do more damage than good because when you have nothing to say it's best that you say nothing yep rather than try to come up with something right yep. especially if you don't have the talent yeah if you can't make it entertaining yeah just you know um I don't know. Was Are we a, entertaining? Was it, was I don't it, know. Did, did I save myself? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, I think fan bases can be very harmful in some aspects if they're not trying to contribute anything meaningful to the conversation. Right. I agree. I think that just whining and complaining online is going to get you nowhere. Um. Because in in the two examples I provided, people were actually standing up and saying, "This is what's wrong with this. Right. This is why I am not right. a fan of this." Like people were showing VFX artists changing the Sonic model and going, right. "I would watch this over what yes. you provided, yes. even though this visually is lower quality. It looks more like what I want, so I would watch this." People were providing; they were doing it the right way. They were showing and explaining their viewpoint rather than just going I don't like this boycott it was yeah it was give a reason why they gave a reason right. why they were like Sonic to gangsters paradise really <laughs> <laughs> well and I, I think you know in, you talk about you know sudden iron irony yeah <laughs> um, when we talk about why we like or dislike something it's usually based on writing characterization quality of performance directorial choices we give our reasons why we don't say boycott it yeah and i i don't want you to boycott something like like, i'm not trying to to destroy careers you know um clearly i'm in the minority in loving thor dark world yeah uh clearly i was in the minority in liking guardians of the galaxy 2 really uh, oh, apparently. Well, you told Guardians. me I was. Oh, I you love know. Guardians. Too. Um, know. You know, it, clearly I'm in the minority for not liking uh, Thor 3. Yeah. I really, really despise, yeah. you know, Thor 3. I, you know, but what? I say it once and move on. You know. Yeah. Don't try to destroy it. I did not write a letter to Disney and ask them to get a new director for Thor 4. I kind of just let everything play out because the cream will always rise to the top yep. and you know if the young lady who plays ariel in this live action movie maybe she's getting her break 
maybe she's yeah. going to turn out to be some incredible actress and have a stellar career and this is her first shot good honor go for it yeah i don't know much about her i don't uh, know Hallie anything ba- about her bailey Hallie bailey Hallie bailey yes yeah. um you know uh break a lake kid you know go make go it get it go you get know, it hit the people the people who want to see this will see this and i've seen some genuinely positive reactions from young little black girls who are like oh she's black this is i love this you know this is awesome you know right it means something to kids. Well, I, you know, and I, and I get what people are complaining about, like, oh, you want to take this double standard? You can't whitewash, but you can black. Hey, shut the. You it, know, you know, it, it is a problem, but like, you're not helping your case by complaining about it and making a, a fuss about it. You need to explain. Like what people did with Sonic, like what people did with EA. Right. You need to yes. explain why it's an issue. And then if people react negatively to you, they're proving your point. Yeah. Oh. The, I, I, and, and, and I just had this one thought, and, and I, we may have exhausted this. Probably. But, but there, there's one thing that you and I cannot appreciate. Because because we yeah. ticked the box on Caucasian on all the demographic forms. And we've, we've grown up in a country where Caucasian is the vast majority of people. We cannot appreciate what it is like to go to entertainment venues and not be represented. No, no, right? it's true. All right, we can't. No, we can't. Right, we can't appreciate that. But I will say this: I grew up with Sidney Poitier and James Earl Jones and Lavar Burton and Cleavon Little and Flip Wilson and. Sammy Davis Jr. and Gregory Hines and the Hines brothers and the list goes on and on and on. I grew up watching these incredibly talented performers that I truly enjoyed. And and in and, and the list could go on musicians, you know, singers, dancers, actors, um athletes. Athletes. You know, oh my goodness, it was such a treat watching Walter Payton run with the ball. Oh, that man was amazing and died way too young. Um, the color of their skin was never an issue for me. Mm-hmm. But I can understand that if people go to the movies and 90% of the performers that they see are Caucasian, I can see people wanting representation. Mm-hmm. I just, I guess I don't know how far you take that representation. I've, and just make it, make. Just m- make them good characters. And that's ma- all it, and make all it you need to do. The information germane to the story. Yeah. Yes. Just, just make it. them good. Just make them good characters. Yes. Yep. Make them this character who happens to be this way. Not right. this character who is this. Well, yeah, make that their character, you you know, um, because then you're not doing anyone. Then you're not doing anyone a service. You're making their quality what they are, not who they are. I think if people had never made a point that there was going to be two women hugging and a quick kiss, is it at the end of one of the Star Wars movies? I don't think I ever would have noticed. noticed. No idea. And if you want to make, if you want to engineer society through entertainment, you you start adding those things in, most people aren't going to notice. But when the director comes out or the producer comes out and makes a point of pointing it out, then you're just stirring up the people who disagree. Yep. You're stirring up controversy. If you are going to be the head of Disney and you're going to say, we're going to socially engineer all of our products to achieve X, Y, and Z, that's not the way to do it. Now, you just drawn a line in the stand, and Americans are kind of hostile by nature. We'll step over the line every time. Mm-hmm. We pretty much do, you know. Yep. Um, just do it. Do it quietly. Do it subtly. And most people will just yawn and change the channel. They'll be like, oh, well, okay, that happened, and then move on with life. Yeah. Um. 
This was a meaty episode. This was, was a, a meaty episode. One. This was this this was uh, a a long one. If you if you've lasted this far, thank you. Now I'll be totally honest. I would love to hear thoughts on this. I one. really would. I, I really, I really would. would because there were so many. There are so many aspects to you know when the fans are right and when the fans take things too far. Right. You know. There's there's more examples than just the two I provided of fans. Like right. responding to things online and and it getting changed for the better, there's um, plenty of examples of them responding horribly and nothing gets fixed. Right. So, good examples of either. Well, you know, and then, you know, and, and let and us it, let us know what what you want. I to, committed a you know. horrible sin in my list of the actors that I grew up with watching. Yeah, I just realized. Who'd you omit? Well, I I I didn't include Cicely Tyson. Mm-hmm. And I didn't include Rita Moreno. And, uh, of course, I didn't include Morgan Freeman, who was Easy Reader on The Electric Company. And I absolutely loved that character. <laughs> but, you know, so here's a problem with modern society. I would get called out because I didn't name a black female, mm-hmm. Cicely Tyson, or a Hispanic, Rita Moreno. And, mm-hmm. of course, she's got, like, I, she's got, like, an Emmy, an Oscar, a Tony, really a, a, a lot yeah. a lot <laughs> so um but i mean that's the ridiculousness that we get to in society right yeah, someone in the comments section could call me out because i only listed black men yeah you know i mean this is the problem with society yeah you know no one's satisfied yeah no exactly one's satisfied yeah did i did i grow up admiring any asian performance <laughs> pat marita um, We've been talking about him a lot lately. Happy days. Well, yeah. you know, I gotta tick these boxes. Yeah. See, this is the whole point. Bruce Lee. This is yeah. <laughs> well, this is the whole point. Yeah. This is why society has gotten ridiculous. If you don't want to be taken to task, you got to work really hard to make sure that oh, I've ticked all the boxes. Yeah. It, it, it's it's absurd. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna live life. Happy day. <laughs> <laughs> We'll see you next time. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below.